Hey, what's going on everyone? Today, I wanna to try and put together a comprehensive guide on how to lobster hoop or crab in Southern California. Now then, I should warn you guys and gals ahead of time. <laughs> if you follow my channel and content, you'll understand that I'm not the guy who will post a lot of dynamic content in terms of catching fish and lobster and crab. I'm more the guy who tries to relay to you what I've learned and picked up so that I can get you past most of the learning curve and get to having fun a lot quicker. To that end, I may have to break up this video into maybe a couple or three different segments because it just may run too long. So maybe what I'll do is cover gear first and then move on to on the water theory, etc. So what I'll do is I'll start with a Google Sheet. Again, kind of dry, but you may find many of these links useful when you get started. And I will leave a link to this Google Sheet in the description. Okay, here we go. First thing we should probably cover are the rules and regulations because I don't want you to end up with a $1,500 ticket. So if you click on the first link, it'll open up a page that gives you a general overview of the rules and regulations. Again, it doesn't make any sense for me to, you know, voice the rules and regulations on a YouTube video because it is static. A year from now, two years from now, things may have changed completely. The second link is going to take you to a page where you can purchase a lobster report card or license or whatever you want to call it. Be aware that this license is in addition to your fishing license, okay? Um, as I speak, it's probably like 10 bucks. And um, if you buy it online, it's going to take maybe 10, 15 days to arrive at your door. So if you want to get it quick, you just maybe step into a Turner's Outdoorsman, maybe a West Marine or something. In addition to paying for your lobster report card, at the end of the season, which is currently around March, you have to turn in your report card. Basically, you tell them, hey, I caught so many lobsters on so many days. If you do not turn that in, there are consequences. I think they have the right to refuse your next year's license or they may up the price for you. Okay, let's move on to the gear. In the vein of staying within the law and avoiding big tickets and fines, you need to pick up a lobster gauge. Okay, so something like this. So on this side, you have the crab gauge. And then on this side, you have the lobster gauge. And if you click through here and then here, it'll give you instructions on how to measure the lobsters. The main component is the hoop itself and I prefer the Promar Ambush Hoop Net. They come, let's click here, they come in different sizes. They come in 32 inch diameter or 36 inch diameter. I think on a kayak, you're probably better off with the 32 inch diameter. And right now, I think you can have up to five traps. And really, uh, when you're hunting lobsters or crabs, it's all about getting as many traps down to the seafloor as possible to enhance your odds. I probably would not go out with any less than, say, three traps. From there, if you're gonna be hanging out, like maybe inside the harbor or close to the jetty wall, you can go quick and dirty and buy the Promar kit, which looks like this. Now, there are a couple of issues with this kit, and if you're gonna be kind of like exploring or doing anything a little more hardcore, I would not recommend this. First of all, there's a problem with this bait cage. The sea lions are on to the game. So um, once they see you paddling out with traps, they know that they're gonna be able to maybe steal bait. Um, and if they can't steal bait, they will crush these um, wire cages. The other issue is with the rope. Now this is a floating rope and that's kind of like newbie friendly. It won't sink and you won't lose it. But the problem is if you don't manage the line carefully, you're gonna have a bunch of line floating on top of the water. And if a boat inadvertently runs it over and gets it caught in its prop, the owner is gonna be really, really upset and rightfully so. So here's what I would do. Instead of the metal bait cage, I would go with the Promar seal proof bait jar and it looks like that. 
Okay, so one end will open and you can stuff this tube with bait. And it seems to be sea lion proof. Now, here's the thing. I mean, if there is a sea lion hanging out by you or your traps, I mean, you're not going to catch anything. They're going to disrupt everything, scare everything away, even if they cannot manage to steal your bait. But at least with this device, you're going to be able to pick up your traps along with the bait and then tr maybe try someplace else. Moving on to the rope. This is the rope that I would buy. Okay, This rope has some kind of like lead core inside. So instead of floating on the surface, it'll sink. Okay, So this is like 45 bucks for 600 feet. Now the diameter is kind of up to you. There's a compromise, you know, quarter inch diameter means the rope is going to be lighter and it's going to be less bulky. It may be a little bit tougher to pull up. If you have a thicker line, like half inch, it'll be easier to handle, but of course it'll be a little heavier and more difficult to kind of wind up and have it be less bulky. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, so here, this is the trap here on the bottom and then this purple line represents the sinking line so it's gonna come up go through this buoy device which is the red device here and then it'll just sink okay if you have a floating line it's gonna be attached to the trap and then if you don't manage the line carefully it's just gonna be a tangled mess on the surface and again, if a boat runs over it and gets it caught up in its prop, um, we're gonna have some hard times. And then the other thing I should mention is I like to use carabiners to connect everything. Rather than tying the rope to the harness, I use a carabiner. Keeps everything modular. It makes disassembling and transport much easier. And don't scrimp and buy the uber cheap carabiners. The carabiners I like are these guys. Okay, so these are not the super cheap carabiners. They're not super expensive either. They're strong, rated for 16 kilonewtons. These are not rock climbing carabiners. But the most important component is this wire gate right here. Okay, this aluminum colored gate. You want the wire gate type, okay? If you buy the traditional carabiners, even if they're like super expensive rock climbing types, they will eventually, the salt water will corrode the pivot points and they will be hard to open or they will remain open. For whatever reason, maybe it's less surface area, these wire gate carabiners seem to um, be impervious to salt water corrosion. But still, it never hurts to put a little bit of corrosion X on all the moving metallic components gloves you will need and here's an example of a pair that you might use these are kind of like cloth latex based and i think these are actually a little bit better than something like leather because they remain pliable and let you keep most of your dexterity trust me you will need gloves they don't call them spiny lobsters for nothing i mean they get to thrashing around and they will jack up your hand okay now we're going to move on to lighting which is obviously very important because uh, if you're going lobster hooping you're going to be out there at night um, here's an example of something that you might want to use maybe for the front or the back it's getting good reviews the only problem i have with this device is that it's short okay so if you have this mounted in the front of your kayak and a boat is coming at you from six o'clock your torso is going to kind of block the luminescence so that's going to be a problem a better device might be something like this. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit taller. Um, the problem I have with this guy is that it's not very bright. It takes three AA batteries and it'll go 150 hours. But that's, that's a little overkill in terms of burn time. I'd rather have it be brighter and only burn like 50 hours, right? So if you get this guy, and it's kind of expensive by the way, you might want to upgrade the bulb to this one. So this replacement cluster comes with four LEDs and the original one only has two. So let's say it only burns like, you know, 50 hours. 
but it'll burn much brighter and I think that's a good trade-off. But again, this is another 15 bucks and now you're in it for close to 100 bucks. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna try and detail, you know, a couple of solutions that might be a little more wallet friendly. And this device could possibly light up your vessel as well as your trap buoys. And it involves the Nalgene bottle. Now this particular model is a little bit longer than your typical Nalgene and you want to make sure that you get the kind with the leash on the cap and also you know pick the wide mouth bottle. Now I would probably stick with the Nalgene brand. Nalgene has garnered a really good reputation for being kind of bomb proof. You can put hot water in them, you can put cold water in them and they're really waterproof. And they need to be waterproof because we are going to stick some kind of lighting element in there, whether it's a flashlight or a headlamp. And so what we can do is maybe pick up a handful of cheap flashlights like these. Okay. These are maybe like 18 bucks for a pair and they're getting really good reviews. You can run them either on a single 18650 lithium ion battery or I do believe three AAA batteries. And these will go a long time they're bright and probably exactly what we need so what we're gonna do with these guys is we're gonna pop one of these into each Nalgene bottle and so what you're gonna end up with is something like this and this is possibly a device that you could use to light up your vessel um, so you have PVC pipe here and I do think this one is the one inch inside diameter uh, you don't want the flimsy super thin one I mean, you just eyeball it at Home Depot. It should go right, right into one of your um, rod holders, right? And then you have the wire gate carabiner here. This is just paracord. And this is the Nalgene bottle. I just put a little bit of um, fluorescent uh, pink spray paint so I can distinguish it between mine and my buddies. And then the flashlight is obviously inside. Um, if you get that decent flashlight, it'll go for hours. And so, if this PVC pipe is long enough, if it's maybe like six feet tall, you can stick it into a rod holder and it'll be your kind of like lighting device, right? So it's rise tall enough and um, it is omnidirectional in terms of luminescence. So it could keep you safe. Now you could also use this system to mark your traps. So imagine that this right here is your lead rope is going down into the water. And then again, carabiner here, Nalgene bottle with a flashlight inside, and it'll be pretty easy to see at night. If you're going to be using the Nalgene bottle as your trap buoy, you wanna make sure you uh, label it with your Go ID, your uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife Go ID. Okay, we're gonna move on to the headlamp. And this is the headlamp that I would recommend. I cannot, with a clear conscience, recommend some cheesy $10 headlamp that might fail on you. This is expensive. It's about 75 bucks. Runs on the 18650 lithium ion battery, which will go forever or will be super bright, okay? Um, this stuff is, you know, IP67 water resistant or something like that. And so it's going to be much, much more reliable than your, your run-of-the-mill garden variety headlamp. In addition, it has the red LED, which is right here, okay? Uh, for those of you who don't know, having a red LED is good for uh, outdoor pursuits because it preserves your night vision. And also, if you're uh, hooping with a buddy, the red light tends to be way less obnoxious and it won't kill his night vision either and then finally um, the fish finder if you're gonna be inside the harbor it probably will not make much difference but if you're gonna venture outside the harbor and I plan to then I do think um, having a fish finder is pretty critical because um, lobster are obviously uh, structure oriented and I think in SoCal if you're gonna go crabbing you need to find structure as well, I think, because the rock crabs that you find around here are also structural oriented, okay? So let's say you're out there at night, the fish finder will tell you how deep the water is, and I plan to be out there in 100 feet and more maybe. So good to know exactly how deep you are, 
and then of course the fish finder will let you know if you are on or near structure and that way you don't lower your trap right on top of structure like right here uh, where the bugs aren't hanging out or worse you know you, you could get your trap hung up right and so you want to avoid you know dropping the traps right on top of structure but you do want to be close enough and find level ground that's close enough where they're gonna be able to find your traps so yeah I do think having a fish finder could make a big difference okay so that about wraps up this video which covers mostly the gear I'm hoping to be able to follow up this video with uh, something out on the water where I can deploy some of the stuff and try out some of this theory craft so uh next couple of weeks you know i'm gonna get out there outside the harbor hopefully if the conditions allow for it and i'll get back to you guys with some kind of re report on that as to how all this stuff comes together um as always thank you for dropping by i appreciate you get out there be safe have fun and we will see you soon bye for now